water expert after water expert, um, Bob Bocock being the first, that if you can see your water, smell your water, or if there's a taste to your water, it's not safe, something's off. So um, we've been complaining about this. I've had blue water in my tub for 14 months and um, been losing my hair, um, it just I, exhausted. That's the biggest thing is that um, there's so much chloroform coming through the showers for a lot of us. They just tired all the time. You know, and yeah. you're miserable, you're sore, um, you don't feel great when you get out of the shower, you don't feel clean, but they want to tell us that it's safe to bathe. Like, that's the biggest thing overall. And we've proven with science, again, sent our water off to independent labs and found out that, you know, we have 1,4-dichlorobenzene. Benzenes are very bad for you. Um, we've got chloroform, we've got... Um, uh, let's see, aluminum, my lead actually went up from eight parts per billion because I have a copper service line, shouldn't be any, to 150 parts per billion. Things are going backwards. Things are getting worse because everybody would rather point fingers and the federal government says the state should pay first and the state's like, well, we miscalculated $460 million out of our budget because of uh, we didn't figure in those tax breaks that we gave the um, wealthy and the corporations. So now they're missing almost half a billion dollars. And now we're worried that we're not going to get the funding that we need. Also, we're dealing with the Speaker of the House, Kevin Cotter, that refuses to back a supplemental emergency funding bill because he wants to put it as a line item each year, you know, which is great. We want it to be a line item in the state state's budget because it's going to be a long going fix that they broke. Again, it's not like things just got old over time and nobody maintained it. These were decisions made by the state officials and they broke our water system, basically. Um, our newest reports are that we are losing 65% of treated water through main breaks, leaks, and broken lines. And we're paying for that. My newest bill I got, I now, even after the credit that the governor sent, $567 that I don't think I should have to pay. Because, first of all, nobody paid to replace the... I'm on my third water heater since the water switch. Um, my wash machine is shorting out again. The motor's going out. Um, also, uh, my dishwasher. I'm on my second one since the switch. And not to mention, we're having drainage issues now, so I'm worried about the pipes. Because the governor says it's safe to flush our toilets. Um, if, um, if it is not safe to run water into your house, how is it safe to run that same water out of your house? That makes no sense whatsoever. He said, oh, it's safe to, it's safe to flush. No, no, it's not. No, because now we have people with bursting lines in their homes and their walls dealing with sewage and nobody's paying for that. We're paying for it out of our own pockets. We've had no help. So again, why should we have to pay what the, for what the state broke? Nobody's paying my medical bills. I've been on sick leave since January 7th. No paycheck. Who's paying for that? Nobody. You know, I didn't make myself sick. You know, mm -hmm. I didn't lie to myself about the water. And again, all they do is they fight and go back and forth. They're making this such a partisanship thing when you know what? People are dying. Um, I just found out that they did find Legionella in the water, um, and that's another issue. They're telling us it's safe to bathe, but how you connect, um, contract Legionnaires, which has killed 12 people, um, is through steam and inhalation and mist. So if they, we have the Legionella bacteria, it is in no way safe, no, no way, shape, or form safe to bathe. So we are fighting with the state all over again. Just like when we brought in Bob Bocock, just like when we brought in Mark Edwards, just like when we brought in Water Defense. We have all the scientific data done by independent labs saying we have these things in our water. I also have no residual chlorine in my water, which means, I mean, you should have a little. You should have some so you know it's going through your system killing bacteria. Um, I have none. I haven't had any since last summer when I started testing it. And the summer before that, September 2014, my youngest had pneumonia. We have no idea. We have no idea if that was Legionnaires or not. We don't know if he was properly diagnosed because the state didn't tell anybody this was a problem. They didn't tell the doctors, so the doctors didn't look for it. So, you know, it, I'm tired of hearing who's to blame. We know who's to blame. Yeah. There's been all these investigations. Right. And plus, we live here. We know who did this to us, you exactly. know? I mean, why is always a big question. It's always greed. It's paving the way to privatization. That seems to be our governor's big thing. He wants to privatize, you know, education, privatize water systems. Yep. You know, I mean, it's, it's greed and money. That's what it is. And that's why the emergency manager law exists, not to help struggling cities, but to strip the remaining bits of their assets and allow them to file bankruptcy like Detroit. So they want to privatize any public assets. And so here we are with poison water, Detroit. They started the mass shutoffs again, over 40,000 households being shut off. We're in the Great Lakes state. That's the name of it. <laughs> this is Michigan. 
And we're surrounded by 20% of the world's fresh water. Detroit can't get water. We can't get clean water. And yet we have also the highest bills in the United States. Why am I getting such high bills for water I'm barely using? Oh, that's because we have to pay for all those leaks and breaks. That's not fair. I didn't break it. Why do I have to pay for it? Right. Of course, life isn't fair here. So, so yeah, so we're just watching people's health fail. We're watching the, the state government ignore us and tell us it's safe to bathe. By the way, you know, we're going to lift this ban on um, drinking the tap water, even though lead has gone up. I have a neighbor that um, their, their lead came out to be 20 22,900 parts per billion. 15 is the max. Anything over two parts per billion is a concern. And they're like, well, we feel confident. We can lift that in a couple months. Why do you feel confident? Because they're trying to recoat the pipes by putting more, you know, acid. They're putting phosphoric acid in our pipes. You know, it's not working. We're finding such high levels, like 12, 13, 1,700 parts per billion of phosphorus in the bathtub, which leads me to believe, well, my lead's got higher, my water's still discolored, the coating's not working. Also, there's people popping off with these, you know, four or five times the hazardous waste limits for lead in their water, and yet we want to work on telling people it's okay to drink without the filters? It's unbelievable. So, it sounds like yeah, what, it's unbelievable. It sounds like what they said after 9-11, they were the uh, governor... Um... I'm trying. Oh, what's that woman's name who was the governor after 9/11, telling everybody the air was safe to breathe? Which, of course, proved you know that that was another. Uh, yeah, I, I know her name. I just like can't think of it off the top of my head. But um, I saw on on your website it's posted. It kind of gives like a whole new meaning to to the term "get the lead out." They're not referring to Led Zeppelin anymore. No. Nope. No, we want the lead out of the water, but we also want all of these other contaminants. And now they're saying there's not enough chlorine in our system. They want our city to pay for this new equipment to dump in more chlorine. Well, what's the point there if 65% of the water gets lost? The chlorine's going to go out. And then the problem is, is that when there's a line break and water leaves, guess what comes back in? Dirt, bacteria, who knows what's in our, con uh, our industry contaminated our ground, which is why we can't just pop off and start digging wells. Um, for a hundred years, for a hundred years, it was um, contaminated and not cleaned up by GM, AC, Delco, DuPont, just dumping, just dumping because nobody back then had any concern for the environment. So here we are with contaminated ground. We've been told we can't dig wells. And of course, it's against city ordinance. And it's like $5,000 that most of us don't have. Um, so, so then we're like, okay, so you're letting that contaminated ground crumble into our pipes and come through our house. Well, when chlorine interacts with that dirt and other organic materials, it causes those TTHMs, the chloroform, the cancer causing byproducts, which may basically makes our showers gas chambers. And so I'm like, oh good, just throw in more chlorine, take more of my money to put in more chlorine. Just keep throwing chemicals at the problem instead of actually taking out the broken mains and lines. That's what needs to happen. Fix the lines. Go a main at a time. Remove all the service lines in that main. Go a block at a time like Lansing did. And Lansing actually worked with our mayor to come up with this great plan. It's efficient. It is less expensive. You get it done a chunk at a time instead of picking these lead service lines across the, um, across the city. Because you know what? It's not just lead service lines now. They've waited so long, so long, it's chewed up galvanized lines. And now they're finding higher levels of lead with galvanized service lines than they are with lead. Because when lead gets, you know... Um, corroded it tends to eat it clean it just cleans it out so it's a nice smooth pipe might be able to recoat that but people with galvanized which is a majority of our city um it would be like taking a roller running it over a plaster wall with one coat and being like there you go good luck and what happens is that the that it absorbs these lead um, particles these pieces of particulate lead and they stick to the inside of this rocky inside of the pipe well what happens when a piece of that breaks off oh poisoned so just get them out. Just get the pipes out of the ground. Start in the highest risk areas with the highest levels. Go a main at a time. Use our union plumbers because, hello, we have unemployed union plumbers in the middle of a water crisis. How does that make any sense whatsoever? Yeah. And there's all these donations going into the Community Foundation and these other nonprofits, and we don't see any of them. There's no transparency. And so people on the outside think that this is the Flint's like swimming in millions of dollars. We have two million bucks right now to replace 500 service lines. That's it. Out of 34,000. Uh, I mean, I have like um, a, a million questions kind of as I was listening to you speak. To be France. <laughs> so, I mean, you're you're becoming like an expert at this. I mean, because I, I am always commenting on a lot of your posts. I mean, like you're like you're becoming like a, a chemistry expert, a, a pipe expert. I mean, 
you know, I'm, I, I, I was going to say, I mean, is there any chance like of you like running for office? And, and then I like, I also kind of wanted to say, uh, you know, along with dealing with this water crisis and the water poisoning, I know it's like, now you have to deal on top of that of just dealing, I'm, you know, I, I, I believe for a long time mm-hmm. and it's becoming more apparent today that there's a serious, sorry, mental health epidemic in the the country, if not the whole world, where, I mean, there is something severely wrong because, I mean, you know, again, like you're, you know, you're speaking about this kind of um, isolated or semi-isolated case that's going on in Flint, but yet there's so many stories that are exactly the same in different kind of, you know, like um, about, about the justice system. And it's always like the same thing that, um, innocent people are being, you know, just killed or unjustly, um, uh, arrested and detained or poisoned, Experimented on, yeah. you know, and, and yet holding people who we know are guilty accountable is like the hardest thing in the world. And, and like the laws of physics move at lightning speed when it comes to, crushing, killing, erasing due process, uh, arresting, torturing innocent people, and yet holding guilty people accountable is like, like physics moves at, you know, backwards pace. Well, I know that if I would poison my neighbor, if I would go put any kind of poison in their food, whether they ate it or not, if I tried to poison somebody, even by accident, say, hey, I dumped chemicals into their water line by accident, pretty sure I'd be arrested. Pretty sure that's against the law. So here we have a governor, we have an emergency, three emergency managers, and the MDEQ and all these people that are like, oh, well, 100,000 people got poisoned. You knew about it. Not only did you know about it. When we started complaining about the the health symptoms, the discolored water, you laughed at us and you called us liars and you put us down for another year. And accused you of poisoning your own water samples. Yes, they did. They said that we put lead. Where am I going to go buy lead? We're going to, I'm going to go find soluble lead and go buy that and go put it in 300 water samples to prove there was a lead problem. I mean, just absolute ridiculousness. And those people get to go away scot-free or to get to, to do minimal time. And all they're doing is prosecuting the lower end people. Right. And you know what? Somebody had to tell them what to do. Somebody advised them what to do. These decisions were made on a high upper level level. And that's where the sits at. You can't sit here and say that, you know, the governor didn't know. Well, then he's the most ignorant, blind person that's ever happened because we were all over the news with our discolored water and our water tests. See, that's what I'm saying. What you just said about it's the lower people that get fired or have to resign. See, again, like that's that is just a perpetuation of more of the same because it's the people at the top who are responsible. That's why someone is in power so that when things go wrong, they are the ones that should be held accountable. And yet they're the ones that just, you know, right. Like they, they'll just keep, you know, throwing the lower people, you know, to the wolves, which, you know, again, it's just, perpetuation of doesn't change more the problem it doesn't fix it well i mean look at our governor he he made this huge pr thing and said i'm gonna drink flint water for 30 days came and collected three gallons from a lady's house that had um yeah. tracked low leads low lead levels so he did that three gallons he said he's still sipping on that by the way how long does three gallons of water last and then he came back and went to blackstone's um pub which is a great place to eat by the way they also have like a ten thousand dollar triple reverse osmosis system so they got the safest water in like the city and so he filled up jugs there well he went to europe after he made his first pledge so like three days after so he didn't he didn't take that he said well it's it's not feasible to take the water with me to europe nobody it's not feasible to make a shower in this and have to use this and wait in line to go get water that's been sitting out in the sun you know at these ridiculous places oh and for you people that don't have cars good luck because they shut down the fire stations so now it's just these pods that aren't even all up and running, so not every ward has them. So, uh, again, delivery, ha-ha, call 211, you get nothing. Uh, uh, Some people were calling 211 last week, and the number was down. If you have an Obama phone, good luck trying to get through. And so in a city where we're 41% at or below the poverty line, because apparently beating up the poor seems to be a... um, you know, a good pastime in Michigan. It's what they do. They strip what you have, what little public assets you have, any kind of... 
um, public programs, strip away, fire the police, close the schools, because who needs education and police? Let's go ahead and change the water system down to the bare minimum and poison people, because who needs clean water? But let's go ahead and give tax breaks to the wealthy and then sell off these giant contracts to be privatized. So that's exactly what's happening. And the governor's privatizing uh, mental health, which is a no no, you're terrible at everything you've done so yeah. far. I don't want my health care or my kids' health care to help us get through the PTSD of living with poison mm-hmm. water in our house in the state's hands. That's what I'm tired of. I'm tired mm-hmm. of our recovery being in the hands of the people that did this exactly. to us. Exactly. they still sit there. Oh, and then the governor says, well, I still occasionally drink Flint water. You still occasionally drink Flint water? We have to do it all the time. We have to live off bottled water, which is not sustainable and against a lot of our, our, our you know, a lot of how we feel. I don't want to be getting rid of all these plastic bottles. We recycle, but how far does that go? So then on top of it, then we have to turn around and, you know, cook with it. We have to try to bathe in this caustic water. We've been trying out all these filters and nothing's really helping that much. And, you know, the problem is, is that it's broken. They refuse to fix it. They would rather spend all this money that we don't have on band-aids that aren't going to work and then say, whoops, well, we tried. Here's the bottom line. Flint, we're not your guinea pigs. We're tired of it. We're tired of you experimenting on us. We're tired of not having a say in our own recovery, and we're tired of the state being in control. That's what we're tired of because they obviously put profit over people every time and try to take the cheapest, easiest route, which obviously is going to lead to more people to die if they do not get a hold of this Legionella. And if more people contract Legionnaires, just, oh, just imagine what's going to happen. But the thing is, is they're going to say, whoops, we tried. We tried. Oh, you know, but don't be mad at us. We just misinterpreted things. We didn't read the data right. I'm like, well, I guess I will go 120 miles an hour down the highway, get into a crash, and be like, sorry, I misinterpreted the speed limit. Uh, I mean, that's my job to know this, that I've been doing this, you know, been driving for a long time. I guess I should have known. <laughs> Same thing with these MDEQ people. Oh, I mean, this was my one job, and I couldn't do it. And so, sorry to you poison people that, were, that your lives will be forever changed. And that's what they don't get, is that even after they clean up the water, when and if that happens, we're damaged psychologically, emotionally, mentally, yep. physically, financially. That's right. And our properties are damaged forever until they can possibly get fixed. We can replace pipes, but can you replace that trust of turning on your tap and have your kids not run away? You can't. So, so what, yeah. yeah, like what, what I, I mean, clearly the real agenda of what's going on in this country is be being more and more clear, uh, I mean, with, with, with each case, like, like you're describing, again, like with so many of the um, the criminal injustice system that I hear, I mean, everything is profit over the public. I mean, it's just clear that more and more people are being, um, and I, I, I've said this before, but there's this line from Michael Moore's Sicko where this um, health inspector says, you're not slipping through the cracks. They're making those cracks and sweeping you right towards it. And I mean, no one has, I've never heard it like just put like so um, clearly. I mean, uh, and, and like why more of the public isn't rising up? I mean, if they just wait for it to hit them before they, I mean, this, this is, it's like, um, it's just like a huge kind of uh, abortion, I feel like that's going on, like this huge kind of, like um, the system is just like a huge tornado that so, okay some people are are feeling it more and getting sucked into it more but like just because you're not at the very funnel of it doesn't mean that you know yes. right and that's the thing is that people are all like oh well it can happen to Flint we don't care maybe they should you know get jobs and all this stuff well there's not jobs to get here in Flint hello welcome to the reality of the situation but it had nothing to do with that. And if people think that it can't happen to them, they're blind and they're ridiculous. And so when it does, I've always said, when it does happen to you, who are you going to go to for help? Who are you going to go to for help? So maybe you should look into that because you know what? There are no guarantees in this world and there's no guarantees that you aren't going to be poisoned or have to deal with the, the wrong end of our government right now, which of course the wrong end is where the people sit. So uh, again, like what, when I first heard about this, uh, you know, uh, you know, as as completely horrible and everything as it was, you know, in in my you know <laughs> completely uh, rational thinking, which is now kind of backwards, my uh, initial reaction was, 
okay, yeah, I mean, like, how, how, you know, you can't possibly deny it. Like, when I started hearing about, like, the fact that the, the, the you know, Governor Snyder and, and that they're just denying it and then just adding more debt and more cover-up and then blaming the people, I just, I literally was just, like, scratching my head and, um, because, right, like, now you're, you're clearly finding out of, I mean, I don't know what else to call it except um, 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 the mental yeah. health um, epidemic yeah. of the I mean, people they knew, in charge. They know, and they will. Re- they refuse to do anything to actually help, and it's dragging people out. And everybody here feels like they're doing this so that way people will leave. That people will leave. The poor people will escape and go leave, and then they can turn this into whatever town they want to make it. And I used to laugh and be like, wow. "That's silly." That's silly. That's conspiracy theory. And then I look at it and I see people up and leaving. I see them running out poor people. And I'm like, oh, so you're running out the poor and the sick. And so you're going to have what's left is a cute little suburban town. And I hate to say that it's true, but now I'm looking at it. I'm like, oh, well, I guess that's true. You just don't care about the people here. And they don't. That's the worst part is you can sit there and get in front of them. We've tried. We've tried to sit in on meetings and actually speak to the governor. We get held outside with armed guards. They keep mm-hmm. us locked out with armed mm-hmm. guards. We're not allowed to get near the governor. He still has not addressed the residents. He did for like three minutes when the president came and everybody booed him because that's the first time he showed his face to the public. So I, and yeah, yeah. And so, so that's the thing. It's like, if you did this and you keep saying, I'm going to fix it. Like he's been saying since January 19th at the state of the state, when is this going to happen? It's now June. It's mid June oh for God's God. sake. And we still have the same poison water and we keep hearing the same excuses. I accept responsibility and I'm going to fix it. Exactly. Your job is to fix it and to take care of us. And you have not done your job. So you need to be out of office because you just aren't going to get it done. And you know, he's like, Oh, I can't just write a check. I can't write an executive order and write a check for Flint. Wrong. I can only do that for myself. Two. He can. Yeah. Well, no, he wrote a $1.2 million check to himself out of our tax money for his legal defense. Against what he did to us. So if he can write that, why can't he write us another million dollars for some uh, some pipes? This is completely out. Yeah, this is completely outrageous that there is no one, and it's like like and it's it seems like there's just nothing that you can do to hold people in power accountable. It's like there's nothing set in place in the system in the laws to hold people in power accountable. Like, who's going to do it? I mean, uh, again, I, I was on your Facebook page. You posted um, uh, a picture of these two men that were that were on your side working with you, like a lot of people that are kind of um, stepping up and things like that. Um, but w- what happened when Obama came to Flint? Well, we had high hopes because he could declare us a disaster, um, even though it wasn't caused by, na- you know, he said it doesn't fit in be- to the Stafford law because it wasn't, you know, a natural disaster. Well, neither was Katrina. Katrina was uh, a-, a Category 3 hurricane, shouldn't have wiped out that city. The city got destroyed because the levees were not maintained and they were not taken care of, but they knew about it. The same thing with what happened to us. Okay, so it wasn't a natural disaster. It's man-made. That doesn't matter. When you live here, a disaster is a disaster. We still can't use our water. We can't shower safely. We can't drink from our taps. And we're not going to be able to for years at this point. That's a disaster. Then we could get Army Corps of Engineers in here. We could get FEMA trucks with cisterns of water so we stop relying on bottled water so much. But the federal emergency ends on August 14th, which is my birthday, so I won't forget that date, um, because they think that we're going to be just fine. They're telling us, well, here's when we're going to stop giving you bottled water because, you know, you should be fine by then, even though nothing's happened. So then he gets up there and we got our fingers crossed. We're like, just tell us that you're going to declare a federal disaster and please take our recovery out of the state's hands, please. And instead, he takes a drink of the water and says, it's fine. The kids will be fine. Get them tested. Get them the medical help they need and the educational support and they'll be just fine. Well, guess what, Mr. President? We can get them tested all day long. They say, yeah, your kids are boys and we don't have the medical care or the educational support that you're talking about that's going to make our kids fine. My kid looked at me. He's 13. He's like, mom, why is the president lying to us? He's 13. It was a ridiculous waste of time, and it was another PR stunt. And people, a thousand people walked out of there completely just deflated. So we had to yep. suck it up yep. and just be like, well, we'll go back to fighting just like we did before, the day before. No help's coming. we got to do it ourselves. They really are. I mean, the, the people that we, you, you know, you were, you're told are in charge or, or looking out or whatever, you end up finding out that they are just completely... I don't know, detached from reality. I'll tell you, one of the worst things, one of the worst things that I see, besides people finding out how horrible their water actually is, people who thought their water was okay, got it tested and found out, oh my God, it's really bad, or who start developing health problems and they're really scared. That 
infuriates me to no end. But what's worse to me, what breaks my heart, is watching the face of somebody that had trusted their government and realized that the government's not here to help us, and it's actually the opposite. It's set up to take care of corporations and wealthy yeah. people. Yeah. Watching their hope break away like minded, because again, I was happy music promoter. I didn't know about any of this stuff. I thought, you know, I pay my taxes, we have a government there to protect us, right? Wrong. So now I look and I see that hope break away from their faces, and it's unforgivable. It is unforgivable to, to the point where I just want to record it and send it to all of these completely heartless, useless people in office like our governor and, um, and well, much of his staff at this point because we don't have help. We have a few legislators in there fighting for us and working for us, but they still got to answer at the end of the day to that guy. And um, so does anything, anything, any bit of help. We still have to go through the state approval to get, like, any kind of thing approved financially for a city. So we're still under the thumb. And, and Nayira Sharif says it all the time. She's like, this is like an abused spouse going to the abusive spouse and right. saying, hey, can you help me with this abuse that you put on me? Now you speak in my language. That's exactly yeah. right. Um, I, I know our half an hour went by, like, so fast. Oh, it did. Um, and so, uh, but again, like in, in another couple of weeks, whatever, come back, you know, more updates. Uh, you know, I thought I, I wasn't going to have enough questions for you, but meanwhile, like the time <laughs> goes by so fast. So, um, Melissa Mays from what are you fighting for in Flint, Michigan? Now, now it's not what are you fighting for? It's, um, Mental health are you fighting for? Everything. I mean, I, it's everything at this point. Survival. Exactly. Survival. I mean, like, it, it's so, it, there's no disputing this now. It is clear what's going on in this country and the vulnerable are being eliminated for profit. It's that yes. simple. Thank you so much, Melissa. Thank you. Okay. Bye.